All right, for this third one, we have that. The owner of a convenience store installs two security cameras represented by the points C1 over here and C2 over there. Both, camera, both cameras point towards the center of the store, store's cash register represented by the point R. All right, beautiful. The following diagram shows us this information across section of the store. They tell us a little bit of more information. The cameras are positioned at a height of 3.1 meters. Okay, so that's the height over here. And the horizontal distance between the cameras is 6.4 meters. The cash register is sitting on a counter so that its center R is one meter above the floor. Damn, all right. The distance from camera one to the center of the cash register is 2.8 meters. That is this distance here. All right, cool. So for part A, immediately they ask us to determine the buzzword angle of depression from camera one to the center of the cash register. Give your answer in degrees. Now, for this part, a lot of people um, don't understand well what is angle of depression and what is angle of elevation. Okay, those are the two things you can encounter. See? So let's say in this same example, see? Um, your angle of depression from camera one to the center of the cash register is basically, imagine you are up here, ¿cierto? You are up here, this is going to be your eyes, see? Your angle of depression is the angle that you need to take if perfectly horizontally, you keep aiming down, 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 until reaching the point you need, which in this case is point R, okay? So your angle of depression, see, is going to be actually all of these until reaching R, see? So from perfectly horizontal until reaching R, it is basically this angle here, okay? Kapow! That is my angle of depression, see? So this would be my angle of depression. When we talk about angle of elevation, it doesn't show up in this exercise, but I think you will encounter it when studying. Your angle of elevation from R to the camera, for example, would be very similar. You would, it would be as if you were situated here, ¿cierto? And you have to draw lines until you reach the camera, see? So you keep adding angles, if you want to look at it that way, or degrees, until you reach the camera, see? And the moment you reach the camera from being perfectly horizontal, this is going to be your angle of elevation, right? So that is angle of depression, that is angle of elevation, that is the angle we're trying to find, the one that's in red. All right, so take a moment, look at it, absorb what this means, see? Depression is from top to bottom, aiming down, see? And the elevation is from bottom to the top, aiming up, see? All right, perfect, so that that is what we're trying to find, see? Cool, so in order to determine this angle of depression, see? It's super useful to think in triangles, all right? And so first things first, I can make a very long line over here, and I end up with a triangle over there, see? Now, for these sort of exercises, I suggest you like split up the diagram into lots of triangles and you see how you can get information for each, okay? And so my end goal for part A is to find this triangle here, which has a 90 degree because I drew it perfectly up, right? From here to here, all the way up. And find the dimensions of that triangle and hopefully get the angle from there, see? And so how can he fill in information from that triangle? Well, first things first, this height is 3.1. This height is 1. That means right here, I have 3.1 minus 1, ¿cierto? This minus this, I end up with just this. Beautiful. How much is that? It is 2.1. All right, and from here, actually, we're good to go to find the angle of depression, see? So I'm going to go ahead and draw that triangle again just leaving it a little bit more beautiful, see? Uh, or actually, no, I can leave it how it was. See, I think it's going to be more intuitive. So if I redraw my triangle, I have 90 degrees here. This is 2.1. This is 2.8. And I need to find that angle over there, see? Cool. So what I suggest, see, is always work with the sine rule. 
okay? I know there's quicker ways to, to solve this, but I'm just going to show you the sign rule because I think for trigonometry, it's the way to go. The sign rule, if you look it up in your formula booklet, is right here, see? Now, notice that the sign rule works in pairs, okay? So the keyword for sign rule is that it works in pairs, that it? Little a goes with big A, little b goes with big B, little c goes with big C. Now, you don't need A, B, C, certo? You can work with just these two, see, for example. But the main idea is that it works in pairs, see? So you need four pieces of information. Now, what are they? What is little a? What is big A? What is little b? What is big B? I'm going to show you in a second. If I go ahead and make a triangle right here, see? The intuition is the following. The angles are going to be big letters. So if this is big A, and this is big B, and this is big C, that means that little a is on the other end, little b is on the other end, and little c is on the other end, okay? So the big letter, so big is going to be angle, and small is going to be, exactly, it's gonna be side, see? So now that we have that in mind, this is suddenly much easier to work with. So here I have a big angle, see? I have 90, so that means I can do that this angle goes with the 2.8. So I can have, following the formula, see, following the formula here, I have 2.8 divided by sine 90 equals 2.1, right? which is this guy here, going to the angle I need, right? so I'm just gonna put sine, whatever, sine x, see, and we're gonna call this x. My angle of depression is now x. So how can I solve this? Well, I need, I need to get x alone, see? So first of all, I can go ahead and cross multiply, right? So I'm gonna do 2.8 times sine x. So I end up with 2.8 times sine x equals 2.1 times sine 90. All right, cool, we gotta keep getting x alone, see? So I'm gonna divide both sides by 2.8. That means I end up with sine x being equal to that whole thing over there, see? Now, what is next to my x, see? My x is next to a sine, okay? And so what is the opposite of sine? It is gonna be sine inverse, see? So I go ahead and do sine inverse to both sides. Sine inverse of this whole thing, cierto? That means this sine is gonna go away with that sine, and I end up with x equals sine inverse of the whole thing I just put. Is that it? Now I'm gonna explain in a second what sine inverse did, because I know a lot of people find that confusing, they don't really understand what happens, etc. Let's go with a basic example first. Let's say I have, I don't know, whatever, 3x equals 9. And I tell you, get x alone. Now some of you are thinking, bro, this is super easy, so you divide by 3, right? But I bet a lot of you don't understand why you divide by 3, okay? The reason you divide by 3 is because x is being multiplied by 3. And so what is the inverse function? What is the inverse function? Function of multiplication, see? The inverse function of multiplication in order to get x alone is gonna be divide. So we divide by three, cierto? Because it is the inverse function, all right? So x would equal three. Down here, it's no different. What is the inverse function of sine? The inverse function of sine is gonna be sine inverse, quite literally. And so when you do that, that is how you certify that you get x alone, see? So x is gonna be equal to that whole thing, and x you will find equals da -da -da -da, just about 48.6. Cool, so for part A, we find that that angle there is 48.6 for part A. Boom. For part B, we need to calculate the distance from camera two to the center of the cash register. So, the distance from camera two to the center of the cash register is this line here. All right, so much how I mentioned earlier, okay? The hard part, all right, of these exercises is getting the dimensions of the triangle that you want. And for that, you need to identify which triangle you which triangle you want. So the triangle that I'm looking for is going to be this one here. See? 
the one that I'm putting in green right now. So I know that I have 90 degrees here. I know that this side is 2.1, but I know nothing else. So what can I do from here, cierto, to get the dimensions that I'm looking for? All right, so I do have this original triangle over here, see? Always look up at the tools you have, cierto, and work from there, because I know these exercises can get messy. But if I'm looking for this triangle here, cierto, I need to find all the information I can elsewhere to try to fill it in, all right? So right now, from part A, I identified this triangle on the left side, see? And usually, what you do in part A helps for part B. So let's finish getting the information on this triangle, see? What is this side up top, which would be this side here, see? What is this, this side up top? Well, I can use the Pythagoras theorem, see? Pythagoras theorem tells me that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is in a triangle where you have A and B and C like this. Notice something very important. Your C, okay, is always going to be the one that's alone, okay? That is, that is because your C is your hypotenuse. That is fancy math language for the long side, okay? Your C is always going to be alone. So that being said, my triangle, I'm just going to draw it up here. So you my triangle was 2.1, here I have 2.8. Um, here I have an angle and here I have 90 degrees. See, this angle we said was 48.6. And so if I um, embark upon the mission of finding this right here, ¿cierto? is it A, is it B, or is it C? All I need to identify is that it is not C, okay? Because C is the long side, as I mentioned earlier, and the long side is 2.8. So I'm going to go ahead and put 2.1 squared plus uh, my question mark squared, okay? equals c squared, which is 2.8. See? Cool. So let's go ahead and get my question mark alone. See? So I'm going to end up with 2.8 squared minus 2.1 squared equals my question mark squared. All right. So my question mark right now, ¿cierto? Has, it is squared. See? So what is the opposite of squared? It is going to be square root. So I go ahead and square root to both sides. Once I do that, I end up with just my question mark equals square root of 2.8 squared minus 2.1 squared. Cool. I end up with question mark being equal to just about 1.85 meters. All right. So I know we're far from completing part B, but I now got another piece of information that helps me fill in my diagram. See, for these exercises, it can get messy. Okay. That means you want to get all the information you can and s just sort of go from there, honestly. So if this is 1.85, how does that help me? Well, it tells me that this is 1.85. Ah, interesting. Does that give me what this is? Heck yeah, it does. If you go ahead and do 6.4, which is this whole distance, minus 1.85, which is what I just found, it is going to give you 4.55. And so this distance here that I'm going to put in yellow, see, this is 4.55. All right, cool. If that is 4.55, that means that up here, I also have 4.55. Ah, now I'm getting somewhere. And so now suddenly, cierto, I have this triangle that I'm going to draw out, cierto? I have this triangle here that looks like this. I have some space down here, so I'm going to do part B suddenly I have a triangle that looks like this. I have 4.55, 2.1, and 90 degrees here. And what do I need to find? I need to find the distance that I'm now putting in red. All right, cool. So now I can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, see? Now this thing in red that I'm going to call y, okay? Is it a, is it b, is it c? It's the long part, cierto? It's the part that's alone. If it's the long part, it's the one that's alone, see? So, A, I'm going to call it 2.1. B, I'm going to call it 4.55 equals Y squared, see? Because it's the hypotenuse, it's the long one. Dale? So, to get Y alone, I do square root to both sides. That means this goes away with this. Kapow, kapow. I end up with Y, with y equals square root of 2.1 squared plus 4.55 squared. All right, cool. That means that y is just about 5.01.
around there. See? Don't forget your units, meters. And so that would be for part B, the distance from camera 2 to the center of the cash register. Now I know some of you are thinking, bro, how did you know that that was the order in which you had to solve it? And my answer is brother or sister or, or anything in between. Um, it's not so much about what is the fastest order or what is the quickest way or stuff like that. It's about identifying which triangle you need and doing everything you need to do to get there. See? And if you're not sure from where to go, just fill in information. So you have to fill in information from your diagram, fill in lengths and angles, and eventually you're going to find a way to get to the, to the triangle. See? Now, once you get a little more creative, you notice like, ah, if I get this, that gives me that. Cierto? And if I get that, that gives me this. And then you can sort of do a plan. See? But that comes with practice. Okay? That comes with training your eye, which just comes with doing much more and more problems. Cierto? But the intuition I can give you for now is find all the information you can. See? It's not easy. All right? But the more information your diagram has, the more things are going to come to your brain and the more likely it is that you're going to find the way to get to the triangle you need, see? So your compass, okay, the way to approach this problem, your compass is identifying which triangle you need and then doing all you need or all you have to do to get all the information from that triangle, see? So first of all, identify the triangle and then start finding sides and angles and stuff. If you're not sure how to get there, just find the angles and stuff. You'll get creative. It'll work out, see? Cool, that is for part B. And for part C, it gets a little funky, see? It says that without further calculation, determine which camera has the largest angle of depression to the center of the cash register and to justify your response. All right, interesting. So it's without further calculation, so we really have to understand and think about how an angle of depression works, see? Now, you can look at it this way, see? Imagine you are standing here. Oh, look, it already has eyeballs, cool. You're standing here. And you're trying to figure out if your angle of depression is bigger to, I don't know, an apple or a tomato, ¿cierto? That is right here. Or to, I don't know, a flower that is over there. See? Now, this tomato is very close to you. See? And so if you want to look at this tomato, you actually have to look down. See? If you want to look at the flower, it's farther away. So you don't have to actually tilt your head. You don't actually have to move your neck. And so knowing that angle of depression so depends on this horizontal line over here, which of the two is larger? When I look at the flower or when I look at the tomato? Clearly when I look at the tomato. See, And so once you have this sort of visual in your head, this quick diagram so that you can do on the side, you realize that if the object is closer, your angle of depression is higher, okay? Because you have to tilt your head more. If you don't have to tilt your head, the angle of depression is probably relatively low, see? So now that we have that intuition for part C, it says to determine which camera has the largest angle of depression. So let's make some space here so we can see our uh, diagram again, see? Here we have camera one, here we have camera two. All right, cool. So, which one is closer to the cash register? Camera 1 or camera 2? Camera 1 is closer, see, because of this 1.85 that we discovered earlier. Camera 1 is much closer than camera 2, which has it at 4.55 meters. Having that in mind, and having the tomato thing in mind, if you're closer, the angle of depression is higher. So, for part C, what you would answer... You would say, basically, just keeping it very simple, because camera one is closer to the cat to the cash register, you have a larger angle of depression from camera one than from camera two. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you solve number three.